Hi everyone, this is Kui with another tutorial. This time I will show you how to make a Scandinavian living room in Blender from scratch. This is also my basic workflow for any average work. Ok, let's go! First of all, I'm gonna head right into Pinterest to research for some references. I'll search for Scandinavian living room images and add into my mood board here. I also have a simple plan that contains basic elements such as a sofa, a plant pot, a rug, a table, and a round chair. Then I open Blender and start creating stuff. I first create a plane, set the size into 4000 by 5000, go to the edit mode and extrude it by 100. I create another plane and set the size to 200. With this plane, I'll extrude one edge to create a wand in 2D. Then I apply a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. Let's say 3000 good enough to create a window opening. You can use the boolean to cut out the wall. But usually, I'll add some loop cuts to form the hole. And then select the two faces, right click and choose bridge faces. It will instantly create a hole on the wall with the correct topology. The next step is blocking the object. I'll create a cube for the sofa, set its size to 900 by 2200 and 800. I add a plane for the rug, some cylinders for the table and the round chair, just like our reference plane. To create a sofa, I'll set the box in wireframe mode, so it will be easier to see through. And then I add another box for the seat cushion, resize it to fit with the proportion. This is my personal method, but you can use the blueprint which has the right dimensions for the sofa. Okay, now I'm gonna hit Alt D instead of Shift D to create the duplicate of the box, but still keep them linked to each other. Then I create another box, scale it down to fit the arm, extrude it along the arm in the back of the sofa. Apply a mirror modifier and use the blocking box at mirror object. Continue to use the cube to create the seating and some cylinders for the legs of the sofa. Apply a subdivision modifier to the cushion by hitting Ctrl 1 or Ctrl 2. It depends on how smoothness you want. Go to the edit mode to add some loop cuts to limit the smoothness. I want the cushions to be soft and smooth, so I'll scale the loops a little. Then I add some more loop cuts to make it even softer. Do the same method with other parts to have the same soft result. We do have a pillows in the reference image. I'm gonna make them by using the cube. I scale it down and add some loop cuts. Then I add a cloth seam with pressure by 5. Turn off the gravity and let it simulate. I'd apply the modifiers and add another subsurface to smooth it out. I go to the sculpt mode to do some sculpting. This is optional but it will increase the realism. For the sake of realism, I also had a displace modifier with a cloud texture. I increased the size a little and then decrease the strength. I'd apply the same modifier to other parts by selecting all of them, and then select the cushion and hit Ctrl L, select modifiers. Okay, that's for the sofa. Let's continue to other furniture. I isolate the cylinder by hitting slash numpad. In edit mode, I add a loop cut, slide it up almost at the end of the edges. Then I select the top part, hit P to separate the selected into another mesh. I fill the missing face at the top. 
and then delete the bottom face of the other mesh. I try to follow the reference image of the table here. I will add two loop cuts here. Then I bevel it to have thickness. Next, I select the vertical frames and bevel them too. Then I add two loop cuts at the top and the bottom of the cylinder to mark the top and the bottom frame. Apply a solidify modifier to create a frame thickness. Maybe uh, 20 millimeters is good enough. I also add a bevel and a soft of modifier to bevel the edges and make the frame smoother. For the chair, I simply create some loop cuts to the side edges. Inset the top face and retopo it by delete the inner face. Then hit Ctrl F and choose Grid Fill. Then I apply a cloth seam to it. Give it some pressure and turn on collision to the plane. Now just let the physics do the trick. After being satisfied with the result, I apply the cloth and went to the edit mode. I select some top and bottom loops, then bevel it with Ctrl B. Give it two segments and then select the inner line. Scale it inward and mark them as seams. Finally, select arm and hit U unwrap to unwrap it. For the rug, you just can leave it like that. But as a visualizer, I will make it more realistic with some wrinkles. Just like in this reference picture. So I give it a displace modifier with the Musgrave texture. Scale the texture side and the string down a little to get the result. Very simple. And remember to add a solidify modifier to create uh, the thickness of the rug. Modeling the window frame is pretty easy. First, you add a plan and then scale it to fit the opening. The tip is turning on the snap by vertex to be more accurate. I add two loop cuts and then select the faces. Hit I to insert them. While selecting on inner faces, hit P to separate them. Then we will have a window frame. Let's add a solidify into it. Finally, the remaining faces will be our glass panel. Give it some thickness too. For more realistic frame, I insert the faces of the panel in 2mm and pull it down 2mm more by the Y axis. As in the reference, we also have some curtains here. First, I make a rail by using the cylinder. Then I add two spheres at both ends of the rail. And then we add a plan, so divide by 30. Assign some vertices with equally distant as vertex group by hitting Ctrl H and hook each vertices group to the new object. Then we will have many empty objects. Select on empties and hit I, location, to add a keyframe. Go to the frame 30 and string the empty objects to the side and hit I location again to add another keyframe. Go to the cloth seam, turn on the self collision, set the distance to 5mm and set the vertex group as a pin group. Hit space to simulate the cloth. Try this many times and tweak it a little more to get the desired result. Here's what I got so far. It's quite good. For the decoration pictures, just add a plane, extrude it, Inset and then it's true again. I can also bevel the faces by inset a little and pull it out like 2 millimeters or so. You can use some models on the internet for the decoration plan. It depends. I recommend you use Free Sky, CG Trader or Blender Market to get some free models. In this tutorial, I want to model everything. I'm gonna block out the plant using two cylinders. For the planter, I just bevel the cylinder, inset the upper face, extrude it, and delete the face. We won't see that in render. Take the circle face and delete only face. Select the rim and fill grid. I also turn on the proportional editing to create some randomness for the soil. Maybe we can solidify them a little more. For the trunk, I create a plane and merge it at center. Hit E to extrude it along the reference image. 
I use a skin modifier to add thickness. Go to the edit mode and select all the vertices. Hit Ctrl A to scale the thickness of the trunk. Then I apply the modifier and create a particle setting. In render section, I use S collection. I also made a collection of leaves based on a material on Quixel Mega Scan Library, which is free to use. Check the rotation and randomness a little more to have the right leaves direction. Then I add a bark texture to the trunk, and then we will have a nice plant with a clean planter. So I think this is enough for the first part of the tutorial. The next part will be about UV and Robin texturing and materials. Please consider subscribing and ring the bell to get the latest news and updates for the next tutorial. See you next time.